Welcome to the Metasploit Sprint Demo Meeting for October 3rd, 2017. Uh, we've got some cool stuff to talk about. Let's get to it. Um, so instead of a chart this time, I thought it's just some framework sets I thought were a little interesting. Uh, this is current um, master branch of uh, Metasploit framework. Um, you can see all these numbers of modules that we have in, in payloads and encoders and, and the such. Be, uh, if anybody's interested in, in, and really likes round numbers, uh, there's some opportunity there to, <laughs> to, 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 you know, maybe a little encouragement to land, you know, two payloads or a post module or something. Um, but anyway, so that's just kind of where, where we stand at the moment. So that's pretty cool. We also hit 9,000 um, oh, PRs and issues. We did. That's very Over cool. 9, Over 9,000. <laughs> I, to, can I just share an interesting fact? Absolutely. Since this is my last my last ever sprint demo. No. When I when I was first hired at Rapid Seven, there were only thirty post modules in all of Metasploit framework. So, so a ten, ten x improvement. Five, six years. Six five, years. Yeah. Six years. You increased. I didn't mean <laughs> this, this sounds this sounds like something you could claim as a, poli a political uh, campaign thing or something. Saying, Under my like, tenure, six years ago we had exa like exactly thirty post modules in wow. the entire framework, and at that time I had written like seventy percent of those. Uh, so that's that's a huge improvement to see. Yeah, look at that progress, man. Come along way, six baby. years we'll have two thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it a linear or is it a exponential? Exponential. That's how those things work. Yeah. <laughs> the graph goes like this. Excellent. Yeah, very cool. So let's talk about some things that landed. We've actually got a couple couple pages that ran off of the first one here. Uh, so things that are you got some new exploit modules. Um, got a deny all a web application firewall a remote code execution module. Uh, we've got a supervisor uh, authenticated RCE, a Node.js V8 debugger RCE, and a QML Shellshock uh, as well. Shellshock? Shellshock. Still still, still, still lingering wow. around there. Yeah, yeah, oldie but goodie. Um, we've also got a couple new scanner modules, uh, one for scanning SMB uh, v1 uh, devices that are on your network, uh, and another one for the Inendo, I guess they say that, Buildmaster login scanner. Um, so module, 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 good stuff. Um, other more things that landed. We have quite a few improvements. Uh, I, I didn't call it every all of them, but but here were some that um, uh, thought, thought folks would like to know about. Uh, session naming support has been exposed to users uh, in MSF console, so now you can actually assign a name to a session uh, if, you, if you if you don't like you know if, if numbers aren't aren't cut it for you and you want to give it something a little more human readable, now uh, you can do that. Uh, we also uh, added some uh, multi-instance uh, WordPress support uh, in the WP admin shell upload module. And uh, uh, also, uh, staging pay uh, PHP payloads now works within the, I don't even know, Suhosan? Suhosan, I Suhosan? believe. Yeah. Um, so, so that's basically like an, an exploit mitigation framework. And right, so this is what's kind of ironic. If you touch yeah. certain little landmines, it, it, it flags you. So we just basically check for it and don't touch them. So it's pretty yeah. funny uh, to get around. But. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so that's in there now. Uh, folks can grab it and start using it. We had some Android APK uh, injection improvements. A uh, little, I won't call it hardening in a, a security sense, but just some improvements. And um, MSF Tidy. Uh, so, so thanks to Tim for the Android APK ones, and uh, thanks to uh, Firefart for the MS, some MSF Tidy exit code uh, uh, and, and other related uh, improvements. So basically now MSF Tidy will actually break the build if you're not compliant. Um, right, so yeah. that's actually a good thing. Because it would actually, I guess it would let you through on info. Exactly. So we were accidentally merging to the master things that weren't actually compliant with our own coding standards. So it can make us be better. Yes. Damn it. The beatings will continue until morale improves. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, and then uh, another cool one that, that is nice is the uh, auto reload after after you, if you're in framework and you use the edit command to edit something that's part of the, the framework library, um, kind of core files, uh, you don't have to use IRB or any other tricks to reload. It'll just automatically reload that now, which is also Tim, I think. Gave us that yeah, one. Tim did yeah. that one too. Right yeah. on. Very cool. The, the, the irony of that one is that I think like four years ago when we first added the edit command, in the notes for it, it said, we're, we're going to put off the library part until later. And, um, you know, we're intentionally ignoring this. And just, all we had to do is whitelist it. And it's like, wow, this works perfectly. And it's like, why didn't we do this four years ago? I don't know. But, um, right. you know, hindsight. <laughs> Yeah, they thought it was going to be harder than it was. Yeah. yeah. And then, well, and you know, also we've bumped uh, the framework Ruby to 2.4.2, is that right? Yeah, fixed a yeah. bunch of vulnerabilities. Um, so uh, I believe Omnibus will probably follow after that. Cool. And um, so that's, that was easy peasy. You yeah, know, yeah. I love when upgrades go smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we like that. And, but, you know, other sundry uh, bug fixes as usual. There's quite a few of those and, and improvements. 
things in the works. Um, <clears throat> we've got an Apache op options bleed uh, auxiliary module uh, coming down the pike, and um, also an IBM notes, excuse me, <clears throat> DOS module. I apologize, I'm getting over something over the weekend, and uh, it's uh, uh, carrying through to this. So you mean sorry. something other than just using IBM notes? <laughs> or, or is it Lotus? Yeah. It's, it's Lotus oh, Notes, you're right. It's, it's Lotus oh, Notes, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, we also have a, a bind shell uh, for JCL that uh, Big Indian Smalls hooked us up with. So for all you mainframe oh, users out there, I'm, I'm going to land that soon. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah, totally. That's totally cool. We got the uh, the Docker timeout thing fixed too, so you should should be in good shape for landing. Um, Hoodie hooked us up with the geolocate API uh, fix uh, so that it's using the correct uh, URLs. Uh, Google moved some stuff around, I think. Um, it's also been updated where it supports uh, use of a, a key. Uh, that you can get from Google, um, so that's 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 in the works there. Uh, Brent, you actually made some improved uh, module options registration. Oh uh, yeah, yeah but it's 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 in, coming soon. It's in it's in the for review. It just hasn't been landed. Yet. Yeah, yeah. So basically, you, you know, when you have a function that has like thirty parameters into it, it can be kind of confusing <laughs> to figure out what they all are, especially when half of them are booleans. Um, so it's just like true, false, true, true, false. And you're like, what does this mean? Um, I made it so you can actually name all the parameters now, and not only that. Um, if there's uh, things that are like kind of boilerplate, you don't have to specify them anymore. They're just assumed. Like, for instance, if you include an enumeration, it assumes that the first element of the enumeration is a default. I know it sounds like trivial, but it actually right. defining module options is a lot more fun because you don't have to, you know, have a big series of billions in the way. And um, yeah, you can just you just read one and tell what it's trying to say. Yeah, so right on. That's the goal there. Yeah. That sounds like good stuff. So hopefully that'll be soon. Uh, the metal extension loader I've been working on, um, I'll speak about that uh, at the team slide update. Uh, DNS transport still still kicking around. Mm -hmm. um, Multi-panel console still in the works and uh, domain fronting. Yeah, we, we got the metal PR up for that one. And I think we got just maybe a few more changes to the actual options loading and that'll be ready to go. Nice. Why are you fronting? Why are you fronting? Why, are you fronting? Why you gotta be fronting? All right. And with that, we'll go to a team updates. Uh, Start with the A team, and because I realize the animation may not play well for folks online, I actually got a still version of that there. Um, so, uh, you know, ag yeah, Jeffrey's been uh, working on the aggregator. Um, also, like I mentioned, the multi panel console uh, that Bill's been, been working on. I know that there's been some work on the VM automation um, uh, repo, the project that we've been, we've, we've, uh, been, been working on. Uh, some of the members went out to DerbyCon uh, last week. Was that last week? That's was right. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Most white town hall. Yeah, that was the most white town hall. That was very really successful. Got a lot of yeah. good ideas from people. Um, gave them a lot of good updates and did some demonstrations of the Project Goliath and uh, the multi terminal stuff too. Yeah, and we got to watch it from here. So uh, for folks online watching the YouTube video or attending this meeting, um, you can go. I well, they allowed you to watch it. I assume they they have recordings of those those feeds. We watched it live, but I assume that they've posted recordings. Yeah, I'm being I'm being told they exist. So if you want to see the, the recording of the Metasploit Town Hall, we'll put links to that in the, com in the uh, comments of the video. Absolutely. So so look for that if you want to watch that. Um, we also, as again I mentioned, there's just various module improvements and updates. Uh, some of which we've called out. Some of which you can go find it yourself because they're they're hidden in there. They're really good though. Um, Xanatos team, uh, Ruby SMB uh, continues to, to move move forward. Um, we got. A, I think we'll have a demo of the rename. Yeah, yeah, yeah. awesome. And the metal extensions loader uh, wrapping up. Um, we're gonna once when when that lands, we're gonna post a video that explains um, how how they work, uh, the, some of the under the hood details, and demonstrates writing a basic uh, extension um, all the way start to finish. So that'll be coming down the pipe. Time for demos. There's actually a band called the Demos, apparently. Mm -hmm. so, not a band, I know. Uh, Dev is the one to carry SMB into the future. <laughs> You're the chosen one now. There can be only one. There can be only one. <laughs> and be he left, so that you're the other one. Good one now. <laughs> so I, I will be demoing uh, SMB2 file renaming uh, today. And uh, just to recap from last time. Um, Previously on just, SMB. Yeah, ju just so like last time uh, uh, delete was demoed. And uh, both delete and rename use the same uh, packet set info. As, and you can do, so delete was file disposition information that had to be set. And so for rename, we're using this rename, file rename information. And you know, likewise, you can set all kinds of other file information uh, as you can see in this 
list over here. Um, this is what we do currently have. Uh, all these, all these different file informations. Um, and so, here, here goes the demo. Let, let me uh, just make sure the IP address has not changed or anything. Um, How do you work with all these tiny little screens all over your desktop? <laughs> That has a big desktop uh, screen, right? Yeah, 156. Yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, um, so you can see here I have this share called Doge64, and I have this file called Hello. Some kind of encoding scheme. <laughs> Doge64. Yeah. The new, yeah, the new hotness. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to connect to the share and change Hello to Hellos with a Z. And yeah, it's there. Oh, it changed, right? Nice. Um, oh, yeah. You should have said abracadabra. <laughs> so uh, we have lanes to do just general set uh, file attributes, you know, like permissions and anything you can set on a file. And uh, Christoph has been chugging away at the uh, file write on SMB1. And cool. it's going great. Yeah, that's awesome. Very good. Mm. So, what would you say the next thing from like a module Metasploit usage point of view we would need to, to work on? What, what what's like the next most important thing? I, I don't know if a lot of modules use rename, um, but yeah, no, no, yeah, but right. like like yeah. like from like a module point of view, what what's like next on the docket? So, so if I can yeah. jump in here, yeah, to, please do. <laughs> on my, um, so the uh, the major modules we care about in Metasploit framework. Uh, at this point are the all the SMB scanner auxiliary modules and PS exec. Mm -hmm. Those are um, everything else is exploits that are pretty much locked in specific to SMB one anyway. So we've decided a long time ago that we weren't going to touch those. Um, however, those modules that we're left with PS exec and those scanner modules all have one thing in common. They all rely on DCE RPC in some fashion whether it's enumerating shares or uh, logged on users or PS exec, we, we drop a file on a share and then we actually access the service control manager through DC RPC and tell it to start the image we drop. Um, so that means that the next most important thing for getting Metasploit framework SMB2 compatible and off of Ned Pyle's uh, naughty list uh, is to get some manner of DC RPC working. Mm -hmm. um, to that end, SMB, I have actually added the IOCTL request, uh, IOCTL commands uh, to SMB2, but haven't like implemented using them for anything. Um, so the the way it works in SMB2 is it opens a connection to a named pipe as if it were a file on the IPC dollar share. And then it sends actual. It's actually sending uh, FS control, file system control codes, uh, to manipulate data back and forth once it's bound to that DC RPC endpoint on that pipe, and it it just sends that back and forth. Now the DC RPC structures are somewhat complex, um, and the original plan when we started Ruby SMB had been to. Uh, create an abstraction for a named pipe and hopefully just hand that over to our existing DC RPC code and just say like, here, do all the same things you were doing before, but uh, but do it on our named pipes. It turns out the DC RPC code and framework is like spaghettified with the horrible SMB implementation we have. And they're basically inextricable from each other without potentially causing damage, frankly. Uh, I don't think we could make the changes we need to use the existing DC RPC code without risking breaking every module that uses it today. So that means that Ruby SMB is going to actually have to do some manner of DC RPC implementation inside of the gem, okay. which makes sense anyways, because like one of the things you'll want to do with your SMB client is enumerate shares and you need DC RPC for that. Okay, so our next goal basically is DC RPC for Ruby SMB. DC RPC, and Christoph apparently already has some some thoughts and possibly some work uh, in that area. So. Okay, good. Neat. 
Awesome. Looking forward to your DCRPC demo next sprint. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Spring. <laughs> what? It's possible. <laughs> Not all the dead weights gone. No pressure. <laughs> Spread those wings and fly, man. <laughs> We love you, Dave. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Poor All right. Note. And on that note. Uh, on that note. On that note. So I'm gonna I, like I'm gonna hand it back to Jen, uh, but I'm gonna real quick gonna mention if there's any uh, last call for demos. If anybody has something they'd like to demo, uh, I see a hand. Yeah. Any other hands? Online? Any hands? I don't see any hands. Oh. Dev went away. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, Brent, you wanna you wanna demo real quick? Oh, I would love to demo. Are I've you? got some pretty subtle demos Speak to up. show. There you are. They're really just they're just quality of life things. I really but, like you know, quality of life. Fun. As long as it's a good quality yeah, of life. Just minimize all the uh, things that might be weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no People always like to text me in various ways. I need it. You know, it's going <laughs> Quit fuse. All right, so a couple of really minor things, um, but this this came up uh, actually while I was at uh, Egypt and Mubix's um, Metasploit, training. Metasploit training at Black Hat this year. We were looking at basically ways that people got stumped by Metasploit, and uh, Will and I were sitting in the back looking at everyone's screen, and sort of analyzing and thinking, hmm, it would be nice if this worked this way instead of that way, because while historical backwards compatibility is nice, it's also nice to like not stump people constantly with the same problems over and over again. So one thing that we noticed is that people like to run MSF Venom straight from within Metasploit framework. Um, I don't know why, they sort of think it's a subcommand of it. And kind of an annoying thing is that we actually have a command that generates payloads within the yeah. framework called the generate command, but it has slightly different command line arguments than MSF Venom. So if you learn one or the other, you can't translate your knowledge between the two. You actually have to use arbitrarily different syntax. Um, so something I started to work on a patch at, at Black Hat. It wasn't really finished there, but I actually just recently got it finished. Um, and I hope you can see it. Let me make it a little bit bigger here. Um, so, oh, my, my terminal uncleared itself. Uh, that's pretty funny. Uh, so I, I'll clear it again. So basically, if you run MSF Venom, it's a nice command, but it takes a while because it loads a whole framework every time you generate payloads. You think, that's why it's really slow at generating payloads. It's not actually it actually loaded every single module as a side effect. Because basically, you, when you run it this way, it's actually running yeah. it separate a framework right now. Exactly. And, and it actually shell. creates a whole new framework instance. Then. Right. 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 So that's the reason why running it as a subcommand is weird. Right. But um, what we did uh, while I was DerbCon, actually, I reached those little parameters so that they, they actually work the same way as they do as an MSF Venom. In fact, I might even add an alias so you, you can literally type MSF Venom here and it will intercept it and run it directly, oh, yeah. but now you can actually use the same command wow. and generate the payload wow. that was that. immediately. Faster. Now, a side effect is this is MSF Villain, you'll notice, actually takes parameters like um, data store parameters as options like this instead of taking them as um, uh, like set variables and that kind of stuff. Well, you might notice that that actually now works in framework too. So you can actually use exploit multi-handler and you, uh, darn it, <laughs> I'm going to fix that next. <laughs> Handler and say run L host equals 192 to 1, whatever. Um, you could use the handler command. Um, I could, but the problem with the handler command also, and I'm going to fix this next, is it also takes completely different arbitrary flags compared to what you would expect. So um, rather than have to say L host or even forcing you to use L host or R port or whatever, um, you can literally just say L host equals whatever and use the same syntax you would use for MSF Venom. Um, my eventual goal is to make it so that every command just takes this, and that way you don't have to learn a whole new set of um, parameters because we have handler. We also have two handler, which also uses arbitrarily different flags. That's not my fault. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the fault is that we just shouldn't use flags at all, and we should just use data store options. And so that will now be a possibility. So nice little usability improvement there. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Really easy. Cool. That's all I got for right now. That'll work. Awesome. Thanks, That's Brent. Good improvement. Yeah. Very cool. I like it. And thanks, everybody, for the demos. Appreciate thanks. it. Thanks.